on the drops. Oh, okay. Careful, careful. Yeah, it's wet there. Welcome back to another video guys. This one is a special one. I'm here with Yang and a... You guys already know what it is. So I'm not going to mention it. It's a China Rello Katma F16. This one is not even in the market, bro. You are the first one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, thanks for, for riding all the way down from TMCI. You were telling me you were encountering massive headwinds. Um, can you please introduce yourself and uh, tell us more about this bike? Okay, uh, my name is Yang. So I'm 31 years old this year. Okay, uh, I'm working as a financial consultant representing Prudential. So this bike itself right, is that um, when I want to, cycle, want to cycle that time, I just try to find something that fit my budget. So the whole story started around at 2012. Eh, 20, sorry, 2015. So you're not a COVID cyclist? No, I'm not a COVID cyclist. <laughs> you, you look like a damn pro, man. Your physique and everything. Wow, shit. I just <laughs> don't look, grow fat. You so. look damn fast. <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, so the time I start with a budget that I'm thinking I want to buy something like a 3, 3k. Yeah, so a bike, after I do a research, uh, actually to me the bike split into three parts. Uh, the wheel set, the group set, and the frame set. So overall, I feel that the group set is the most important thing. So I decided to buy a Audi Gra DI2 6870 series. And I, my plan is to use it for at least 10 years. Mm. So these are uh, seven years already and still surviving and wow. first battery some more. Wow. Yeah. Then after that, I just buy a aluminium wheel set and a random frame set mm. also. So over the time, every few years, I upgrade it slowly. Mm. So the next second thing that I upgraded is actually the YOLO wheel set at 2019. I see. Okay. Yeah. Whereby the last one, then finally got the frame, which my budget at that time only left around 1,005 because Start with 3k, but my final goal is that my bike should not be more than 5,000 plus. Right. So you see the group set cost around 2,000 plus, the wheel set cost around 1,003. Then I left around 1,005 budget, so I just nice, I saw this frame online and I get... Can I ask what is the total price of the build now? Build around, no, I think... Less than 5,000, right? Still less than 5,000. 5.1, 5. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so the, the, in the highlight of today's video is the frame, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, you were saying that you were just trying to build a bike within your budget. Correct. Uh, why, why this bike and, you know, why don't you just go for a Polygon, Sava or, you know, some other brands? Uh, okay, first of all is that, first of all, it's the colour. You know, I married, so my, I want to put this bike nicely at my cabinet and my living room. So the colour must be her liking. So she liked yellow. And if you see the stock bike in the market, right, you can't find much yellow color. So, and I, then I browsed online, I saw this, is a yellow color one, and she liked the color. <laughs> then I get it, that's all. Right, so and, where, where do you buy this, this frame from? Which, which some part? random website online. Okay, okay. Yeah, then also, you see the curvy, the curve, everything is very nice. It's very present to the eyes. Right, uh, China Rello and uh, Katma. So pe for people who, who are not familiar, why it's called a Katma is just to... Because the Pinarello is called a Dogma, so <laughs> this is a Katma. <laughs> uh, not, not to so-called compare with that, uh, the Dogma, is that because I am the cat lo lover. Oh yeah, yeah, so the, the photo when I posted it, you had you have two cats. Correct. That is a real life Bengal cat. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why it's uh it's named as Katma lah. Right. Then I know that at the time is the F12. Then I also not not because of that, I am also prefer some those fighter plane stuff. Mm. So mm. it's a F16, uh the fighter jet. So it's named after that also. Right. So what is the weight of the build? Well, uh, I think if without the accessory, I guess it's somewhere around 7.9. Okay. Not very sure. Is it because the, the wheels or why, why is it so heavy? Because for rim brake, usually, you know, people get it under 7 or just over 7. Because I believe it's the frame itself. The, the frame, frame is, heavy, is right? slightly heavier. Mm. Uh, on to your group set. Uh, this is a uh, Altegra Di2, but it's the older version, and you've used it for seven years. Seven years. Any issues with it because it's electronic, right? Have you had any problems with it shifting or wires, wires problems? No, problem free. Really? I zero maintenance. Uh, first group set, third frame set already. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I keep on changing your body, like in short. Do you have to change the battery? 
uh, on the group set? I seldom charge it. That's the main thing. I think from for the past seven years, I only charge it less than thirty times. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is also my first battery uh, until now. Wow. And I have when when you first brought the bike, the first thing I asked you was the cassette. Man, it's so small. What is the size? <laughs> the cassette is eleven twenty five. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you must be a damn strong rider, bro. This is fifty two thirty six. Fifty two thirty six. Yes. Okay. This yeah, is twenty five. Yeah. Actually, the cassette oh wise, right, is because due to budget also. Okay. Because at the time at Carousel, right, uh, this thing pop up brand new, seventy dollars only. I see. So for the price wise, brand new, I just get it. Wow, it's the smallest cassette I've seen. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just based on this. I'm assuming you are a sprinter. You only ride flats. I mean, of course, we are in Singapore, right? No, actually, I prefer climbing. Okay. Yeah. When the when I built this around eight months ago, which is last somewhere last August, I actually within one month I climbed Mount Faber for around eight thousand elevation. Wow. Yeah, I just in short, I Mount Faber eight thousand. Because one lap, I think it's only four hundred meters, right? Yeah, so I mean, looping up and down. Holy shit! Yeah, so <laughs> I with this bike, yeah, in this bike. What so the? it's in my Stravas, and I in short, I so just get the frame. I also want to know how doable it is, so I try to torture the frame, lah, in short. Yeah, because when I was stalking your Instagram profile, I saw your Strava stats, right? It is pretty damn fast. You ride like hundred plus kilometers and the average is like 32, 33 30, 31 30, oh that's yeah. fast man I mean uh, solo I'm assuming or solo solo holy crap <laughs> you put you put all my other guests to shame you know those with 20, 30k bikes no, right no, 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 maybe they never really put their real uh, data online la. wow this is crazy okay um, so you climb with this cassette uh, how, how is it like are you are you a high cadence or high like cadence you can go high cadence with this yeah wow high cadence uh, yeah just just bite the teeth and carry on with it. <laughs> la. Oh my god, that's amazing. So, okay, so yeah, so with DI2 seven years, no issues at all. No issue. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Uh, okay, so then now onto your wheel set. This is the Yolio, sorry. Yolio uh, Pro Cringer. Okay. Uh, what, how, how, how do you find these wheels? Why didn't you get wind space? The time, I, the time when I bought it is around 2019, if I'm not wrong, 2019. That time, wind space, I think, haven't come out or yeah. it's not that famous yet. Yeah, yeah. And my colleague, uh, tell me about the Yolo and in terms of budget wise around 1000 to 1003 with a DT Swift 350 hub I think it's worth the money mm. yeah. uh, How's the performance? Is it so far so good? Mm. Any issues with hubs or? No, no issue with hubs, zero maintenance also and mm. the main thing is this is my first carbon wheel, one and only so I also cannot uh, comment much about how does it feel compared to other wheels? Mm. Yeah, and so far so good. Right, and this is a Pirelli P0, is it? Yes. How, how is P0? Mm, it's a bit soft and it's quite comfortable to ride. Mm. And the main thing is because the color match the bike frame. Actually, I have <laughs> friends who, who own P0s, right? They say it, they, it can get quite slippery during the wet. Do you find that a problem? Uh, no, you during wet period, I don't, I don't ride at all. <laughs> totally don't even <laughs> don't, go Don't ride, yeah. Safety okay. comes first. La. Okay, uh, clean chest, right? Pinches, yes. What is the pressure that you run? I ride. Uh, if I want to so called the day I want to go fast, right, usually I start with 110. Okay, same like me. Yeah. But people always tell me that you, you run so high pressure you are bouncing on the road. Mm. Do you think that's a problem? I don't feel much, I still can go here already. Yeah. Right? So so one ten for you both front and back? Yeah, front and back. Wow, just yeah. just like me, man. This is a twenty five C, is it? Twenty five C, yes. Okay. Uh rim brakes, uh you have you tried disc or will you still stick to rim? I never tried this before. Same thing, budget concern because uh, this group set compared to a rim group set wise, right, the cost can be around five to six hundred dollars different. Mm. And in terms of maintenance wise, rim brake is definitely more easy to maintain. maintain right? yeah. yeah. So for those uh, easy to maintain, budget wise, uh, that's why I go for rim brake, and I don't cycle in wet weather. Yeah. During wet weather, so. Yeah, rim brake is my choice. Uh. Right. Uh, what about brake modulation? People who, who like, like me, for example, I'm running on disc, but I still favor uh, rim purely because it's, uh, like you said, maintenance free, easy to service, right? But the modulation and the braking, you know, feels much more powerful on the disc. Uh, do you think that that is something that you would consider in the uh, future? For what I read through and see the videos, right, is that definitely I feel that the disc brake will, the braking power is definitely stronger than the rim brake. I, this is how, how I feel because uh, this is a technology whereby even motorbikes and the so-called mountain bikes they are still they are using ma. But uh, in terms of in future wise, I also want to see whether how the market tra trend like. 
because uh, if they are going to totally remove this uh, rim brake from the Audigra and Dura Ace version, I think I will swap to uh, this brake. Then right? because you got no choice, right? I have no choice, correct. Yeah. And because overall, I, in terms of budget wise, because I also calculate what is the resale value remain. Mm. Yeah, all the older good set, group set, normally I will try to so called sell. Mm. But so far, this group set is still doing good, so I'm not planning to sell yet. Right, yeah, 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 for sure. Since it's already lasted you seven years, man, yeah. it's going strong. Correct. Uh, okay, do you have a power meter? Yeah, yes, X Caden on my left crank. Oh, okay, so single sided. All right. How, how's the XKD? Is it good? Mm, Accurate? Same thing, first power meter. The data never so called, it's quite constant. Never, never break before. And every three, four months, I charge once. Oh, Char so it's not a round battery, you have to charge it, is it? I charge it, it's a, yeah, it's a, like a portable charger using oh, a okay. brown charger to charge it. Okay. Then, yes, it's I think I bought it, uh, now it's, now online, I think it's selling around 300, but I bought it that time, a few years back, it's around 200 plus only. Mm. Yeah, so cheap and good. Right. Uh, saddle, what saddle is this? It's a specialized power saddle. Okay. Uh, how, how do you find the saddle? Mm, I think this one actually uh, solved my butt saw problem. Because mm -hmm. my previous saddle is the Pona Prologo. Pro, Pro Prologo, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's a, it's a stock uh, saddle. Uh -huh. So I just changed to my friend recommend this and it's, it worked well. Okay. Uh, and correct. And what size is this frame? This frame uh, is 46.5. Okay. Uh, how do you decide on this frame? Because um, uh, people usually have issues with buying frame sizes. Either it's too big or too small. For you, how do you decide that this was the one? Do you go for a bike fit? Uh, I buy the frame first before I go for bike fitting. Oh, so you went for bike fit? Yes. Okay. Okay. First of all, the frame wise, right, because just time I have another frame similar height to me, slightly taller. He riding sixty, uh, oh, sorry, forty six point five. Mm. Yes. But uh, then after that, I see that eh, should be fine. La. I never even ride his bike, but I think that it should be fine. So I just get this size first. Mm. Then after that, I went for bike fitting because the my second frame is very uncomfortable. That's why I decided to sell it and get another frame. Mm. So when you went for the bike fit, what did the bike fitter say? Were you completely out of shape or what kind of adjustments did they do to you? Actually, uh, the person said that this frame is uh, rather suit me and they only actually do some micro adjustment and it solved all my back pain, my leg pain problem. Oh, okay. So do you recommend that people should go for a bike fit? I would recommend that if this is your second or your third bike, then you go for your bike fit. Because I always believe that the first bike right, usually is more on the trial, mm. trial, trying mm. only, like whether you like it or not. Mm. Then after you like it already, most likely you will like, change to something that, that really you favor in terms of the color, the size, the, even the brands, all that. Then when you really like the frame rate, then you go for bike fitting. Mm. Because overall bike fit is not that cheap. Mm. May I know how much do you go? Or which bike fitter? Can, can we disclose? Uh, Bike performer or performance bike? Performance yeah. bike fitter, I think it's called. Performance bike fitter at somewhere, yeah, at the Skalang area, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, was it like what, four, five hundred bucks that you paid? Around four hundred. So it's like a complete bike, bike yeah. fit. Okay. Uh, handlebar, I'm assuming it came in the frame. Yeah, came with it. Because your, sh your stem looks very short. Uh, it's like a 90 or 80? 90. Okay. Yeah, you I get to choose or you can't choose? They, they can allow you to choose a stem from 90 to 120, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any issues with the frame, like BB creaking or anything that's breaking apart, like saddle slipping or anything like that? Nope, zero problem. <laughs> zero. So it's yeah. working just fine. After four thousand kilometer, eight months, and eight thousand meter elevation. <laughs> yeah, eight thousand elevation in one month, no problem. Wow. Problem free. Okay. You look like somebody who's a very seasoned cyclist and you cycle a lot. What is your opinion on OSPW oversized pulley? Will you get one? My personal opinion, ah. No, no budget. <laughs> it's budget is not an issue. It's not budget issue, ah. Okay, uh, I think I think it's a bit unfair to say budget is not an issue because most OSPWs are very expensive. Correct. It's about thousand uh. dollars. Do you think for the thousand dollars, it is worth the investment to save that five watts? Uh, because I only know that OSPW they save save how many watts? Five watts. Five watts, right? To me, no. <laughs> Definitely no, but the five watt is provided you keep your OSPW top notch condition. Right? Mm. I say after a few months, a bit dirty, that's all going. I think maybe it's not even five watt, might be just one or two watts. Mm. Yeah. Random question: How do you clean your bike, or how often do you clean your bike? Somebody in Instagram asked me, can I start asking people this question? So. Oh, clean my bike. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, brake pad wise, definitely I only so called I use until I really feel that the braking power is not there, then I change. And cleaning wise, uh, same thing, I feel dirty, then I clean it off. Oh. Mm. Somewhat recently, I just changed the in, instead of lube, right? I go and buy the absolute black wax. Oh, how is it? I think the feeling is damn short. <laughs> Smooth. But okay, I think lube, right, is smoother than wax. Really, man? Or oh, you think wax is smoother? I think wax is more oh, really? smoother and it's damn clean, eh? It's clean, I have to agree. Yeah. Okay. All the residue is all the residue from the wax, it's not even dirt. Mm. Absolute. Wow, you're yeah, the first guy I, I know that uh, is riding absolute black wax. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a liquid form, right? And then you just. Uh... Yeah, they come with like uh, Atas chocolate bar form. Oh, really? Then you just need to go and cook it and then throw your chain oh. inside. Oh. So it's something like uh, molten wax, right? You yeah, need to wax. put in the cooker and everything. Correct. Don't you think that is very troublesome? Like, you know, every time wow, I need to put it into the cooker and go and cook it. Do you have like spare chain? Uh, no, la, no special. So I uh, usually, when I plan my schedule properly, if I want to cook my wax or that, usually I will make sure that two days I will not ri be riding. Mm. Yeah. And how long does the wax last? Uh, around 1,000 km. Wow, that's very long. Yeah, 1,000 km before you need to so-called redo the whole cycle again. La. Do you have to... Uh, so once you, let's say I'm, you are riding already, right? And then you need to cook the wax, do you just take it out and just dump it in or you have to clean it first? Uh, you need to remove the old wax before you... Uh, do the new wax. Oh, how do you do that? So we'll cook again. Oh. oh, cook it again. <laughs> yeah, cook it again. Oh, let the wax uh, remove from it. Wow, your yeah. wife must be thinking what you're cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> cooking chain. <laughs> I have a pot at home that just... Uh, just for your yeah, wife. Yeah, just uh, for my chain. Hopefully uh. your food don't go into that. that <laughs> <pot>. <laughs> okay, uh, what else do you do to your, your bike? I mean, in terms of just cleaning, just wipe down and... That's no, all nothing. I mean, rather, I, in terms of cleaning wise, I, I can say I'm quite lazy. Mm. After I cycle back home, I, I, unless the bike is very dirty, uh, if not, most likely I will just hang it back to my cabinet. That's all. Mm. Okay. Uh, last question from me before we move on to IG questions is, okay. what do you dislike about your bike? Dislike? Uh? If there's any, you don't have to say if there's, there's none. Uh, actually, no. Like, I like this bike a lot. Yeah? I think va most value of money already after so many, after the third frame. How, how long have you been on, how long have you owned this, this specific frame? This frame has eight months. Oh, very new. Yeah. Very, very new. Uh, sorry, another question from me is, do people point out your bike and, and come and ask you about your bike? Yes, yes, yes. Really? I think I bring joy to people on roads, man. <laughs> Instead of people hating us. I uh. think if I see you, right, I, will, I will ask you, man. Like, yeah. hey, bro, can I take a photo of your bike? Correct. Right. Some people take ask for taking photos. Some people mm. just laugh about it and smile. Yeah, you know? they yeah. give you thumbs up and they cycle past. Correct. Or when you overtake them, they're like, China <laughs> Reynolds overtake the... Overtake me. <laughs> We will move on to IG questions. If you want to ask your questions, you can follow me on Instagram and you get the chance to ask your questions. Okay, the first question is... Why different wheel profiles for front and back? Any difference versus going full deep or full shallow? Wow, this is quite a technical question. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of technical part. For me, it's because uh, last time I went to Malaysia to cycle with an uh, aluminum wheel. Just a side wing, to I totally being slapped to uh, one side. On aluminium? Yeah, on uh, alu, alu wheel. Hmm. So in order to prevent that to happen again, so I don't dare to go front 50, back 50. Sorry, so what's the profile again, front and back? Front is uh, 38. Okay. Back is 50. Okay. Yeah, so it's just for safety reason, that's why I put it this way. Uh. So when you bought the wheel set, you bought it individually front and back? You didn't, it doesn't come in a set like 38 and 50? Yeah, actually it comes in a set. Oh, the okay. Yolo website, they, allow, they come with this set. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And it's laced to DT Swiss, uh, 240 is it? Oh, uh, 350. 350. Okay. Um, will you go for deeper wheels or you think this is good enough for you? Uh, I'm thinking for deeper wheels since now I'm a, a bit stronger compared to last time. But mm. you're still thinking like, and also budget concern wise. <laughs> okay. You can choose not to answer this question if you don't want to. Okay. The question is, why are your decals so different? Is this OEM or replica? Uh, this is a custom made decal actually it's not decal right? if you go and touch it right it's actually everything is nicely painted onto the painted inside lacquer inside right? hmm. uh, and it's just a random chinese frame oh, carbon frame hmm. uh, so when you buy the frame do you get to choose different colors what colors does it come with uh, if you remember 
is wow, they got hundreds of options. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, can they customize it for you? Yeah, yeah, you can customize different kind of color. If you want your red, red to be on top, then black to below, then you can do it. If you want red on top, white below also can. Oh, wow. Just, you just request, uh, they just do it for you. So the, the decals is your specific ones or is it the default? Uh, I custom it myself. Uh. Ah, that's why one side is uh, China Rello, one side is Cat Ma. Correct. <laughs> uh, very unique, I've never seen this. The question, next question is, how is the performance of the bike so far? Uh, as I discussed it earlier already, uh, no problem. Mm. To me, it's, I'm very satisfied from, for this bike. Mm. And for this price, five, around 5k, and for this performance, I think it's definitely worth of money. Mm. Why, oh, there was a mud gut here, actually, you use a mud gut. Why, yeah. why do you have a mud gut? Don't you think it's not arrow? Because sometimes, uh, oh, it spoils the look. It's like, it dirty my shirt. Uh. And sometimes when the puddle of water, you have no choice, you need to go through it, right? When the water splashed to my back. Uh, so I don't like the feeling, so that's why I put a mud guard. What mud guard is it and how, how do you put it in actually? Just, just stuff it in. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it, is it like a specific brand or just something from Shopee? Or? Uh, something from Shopee. La. Okay, this question is, how much voids are there in the frame if you know? <laughs> is there any, any uh, uh, probably you never even send it for x-ray, right? Yeah. But do you think there's any uh, defects in the frame inside that you can't see? Like um, the way I it's manufactured, don't know. Don't know, but I mean, as long as it runs, lah, right? As long as it's run and you don't disintegrate at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. After eight months, no crack, no, not a weird sound coming from it. Yeah. yeah. Does your cycling friends take you seriously? Okay, first of all, right, I'm not that serious rider. Actually, I, I'm damn scared of you. I think you are damn fast. <laughs> I really think you are damn fast. I, I'm not that serious rider. So all my friends are casual one. So everyone just as long as we turn out for riding as promised, everyone is happier. <laughs> yeah. uh, like I said, I, I'm so scared of you because of the cassette, man. The cassette, there's one guy I feel he has a giant, the pink giant TCR, the Maglia Rosa. He also has super small cassette <laughs> and I heard he's very fast. So I hope I don't have to encounter you one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Uh. Aren't all carbon bikes from China anyway? What is your response to that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from what I heard, I think most of the carbon frame come from China la, or even uh, Taiwan. Yeah, to, yeah. So I think even, even the original Pinarello is made in China. That's why I'm not very sure. I never do details on yeah. it because in the first place, I'm not going to buy any branded stuff. Yeah. Bra sorry, not branded brands. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last question from me before we end this is, what is your opinion on uh, bikes these days, right? Like, um, Take a, for example, a Merdon or very high-end bikes, they cost 20, 30,000 dollars, not 30, 20,000. Do you think it's worth that money? I personally feel that uh, it depends on your life cycle. Lah. Because if you are someone that is so-called got the money and love cycling, I believe you definitely will spend. But for me, my life cycle is that I just get married, I just got a new house, I plan for kids, so I definitely have limited budget. Mm. But let's say, if honestly speaking, right, if when the day that I, I semi-retire, right, I will go for a top-end bike. Wow. With Dura A's, everything top-notch one. So do you think uh, spending that amount of money, right, let's say you go into the five-figure range, mm. it will buy you speed? No lah. <laughs> no la. It's all about the, it's still about your own personal discipline of trainings and how you ride it lah. It's yeah. the engine lah, the engine more important lah. Yeah, yeah. How, how often do you train? Actually, I'm not a, that's why I say I'm not a serious cyclist. I, I, on average, I only cycle around 100km per week. Oh really? I don't believe you man, so little. Really, you can see my travel <laughs> record and I, around February period after Chinese New Year, I stopped for almost a month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you must be some robot or what man, I don't know how you do it. Uh, okay, I think that is the end of the interview. Mm. Thank you so much. Anything you want to top up? Yeah, maybe I want to top up is that some people, when people slow all this, all this frame, right, I think that when you buy a bike, I personally feel that you should look at the group set first, followed by the wheel set, and then lastly is the frame. Lah. Okay, I got yeah. a question on this one. Um, one of my, one of the series that I did, someone said that to upgrade the group set first, but I didn't agree because I thought the, the wheels will make the most difference. You are of the opinion of upgrading components rather than getting a whole new bike. Group set, I think you should at least get a one of five group set. Shifting performance will be a lot better. And um, I think if you wanted to upgrade anything, should be the wheels. So, for example, let's say you move up from 105 to Altegra, mm -hmm. right? Compared to a alu wheel set to a carbon wheel set with deep ones, I think that the carbon wheel set will, make, uh, will give you more benefit compared to, you know, just changing your group set. Mm. But what, what is your opinion? I mean, 
we all have different opinions. Okay, if you if a bike just like I say that a bike split into three parts are uh, frame set, wheel set, and group set. Just feel like I feel like the group set is like your heart. The wheel set is like your muscle, and your frame set is like your skeleton structure. So I believe you need to have a stronger heart to ensure that the spinnings everything is smooth before you so called you can pump up your muscle ma. Mm. Then lastly, as long as your skeleton structure don't fall apart, <laughs> thing is fine already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, DI two or mechanical? DI two. DI two. First of all, if the DI two Provided DI2 have no problem, okay, maintenance free. Yeah. Mechanicals, if after you use a while, it will lose muscle. Every, I think you have to keep you, throwing, uh, adjusting the idea. Yeah, uh, maybe every six months, you need to go and find a mechanic to so called to fine tune it. I think it's very troublesome. For mm. me, is that I want value for money at the same time, I want so called trouble free for mm. maintenance wise. Do you have to align, uh, sorry, I can't remember the, the term, do you have to keep adjusting your RD to make sure it's straight? No, that's okay. where I build the bike, the mechanic. Help me do one time and that's all. Wow. So until now, all good, man. All good. Okay. Anything else you want to mention? No. Okay, that's all. So uh, thank you so much, Yang, for coming and uh, showing us your bike. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. If you do enjoy it, do consider subscribing. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.